People ask me why I paint some of my furniture. I mean, Rex, don't you love wood grain? Well, of course I do. I've made plenty of pieces that display beautiful, natural wood with contrasting colors and clear finishes. But I've noticed that a whole room full of natural wood pieces can get kind of, you know, busy and oppressive. If you build with a lot of walnut or mahogany, things can get dark in a hurry. And just a couple of painted pieces can brighten up a room. They can make everything so much lighter. If you look at real furniture from two or three hundred years ago, a lot of it is painted. Some of the colors are bold and striking, and a lot of the designs are wild. We like to think that old furniture was stately and dignified, but it turns out our ancestors weren't as stuffy as we think. It turns out they liked a bit of color. They liked fun. I like fun too. That's why I build the furniture. Because it's fun! <sighs> Painting must be easier than clear finishing, right? I mean, you're covering everything up. Well, unfortunately, it's not that simple. Paint is really good at covering up colors. So your wood can be inconsistent, streaky. You can even mix different colors and have pine and poplar in the same piece. And the paint will hide that. But painting is actually more demanding of your surfaces. Without wood grain to distract the eye, you'll be able to see every little nick and ding in your work. So just like with any other finishing, preparation is key. Just a few weeks ago, I finished this early American desk for my daughter. I made this piece to be fast and economical, so I just used white pine boards from Home Depot, and I cut up a 2x4 to make the legs. The wood was cheap, but it's also inconsistent. There are knots, different colors, and the grain isn't always attractive. I knew I was going to paint it, so I didn't let that stuff worry me. From a distance, the piece looks crisp and finish ready. But as you get closer, there are a lot of details that need my attention. I've got spots of torn grain next to my moldings, big knots with splits in them, and fragile corners and edges that are already beat up just from being in the shop. I've even got some little bits of missing wood and holes where I set my nails. All of this stuff needs to get fixed before I can even think about painting. The first job is trimming and cleanup. One of my corners is a bit uneven, so I trim that up with a smoothing plane. I'm also going to bevel all my sharp corners and edges. This takes off damage, and beveled edges are much stronger than sharp corners. They'll resist future damage. My moldings still have facets left over from the smoothing plane but a bit of sandpaper gives me a gentle curve without any distracting flat spots. I've also made a quick sanding block with a sharp corner that gets right into that detail without messing up my straight lines. Easy does it here. A little over sanding can really ruin a sharp edge. Now it's time for a little bit of wood filler. I've tried pretty much everything out there, and I've gotten to like this Minwax stuff. If you've ever used Bondo or Auto Body filler, this is pretty much the same thing. It's a liquid plastic with a hardener. It cures by chemical reaction, and it smells like death. So put on a respirator. Why am I using this instead of something more natural? Well, because there's no water in it to soak into the wood, it doesn't shrink or swell, and you can sand it 20 minutes after you put it on. Winner! Now, the trick with wood filler is putting on just a little bit more than you need. Too little filler, and you haven't fixed the problem. And if you put on too much, well, you'll be sanding all day. So here's a knot that needs filling, and I just need to give it a go. That's too little. That's too much. Ah, that's about right. The voids are filled, but there isn't a lot of filler sitting on top of the wood. Now, here's that bit of tear out on the edge of one molding. I've taped off the round portion, and I'm just going to fill straight across those torn fibers. Pull off the masking tape, and my filler is just where I want it. After about five minutes, the filler isn't hard, but it's firm enough to trim with a sharp chisel. This is a good opportunity to get rid of blobs and thick spots. This filler gets really hard, and sanding through it is a pain. I often use a block of scrap wood to back up my sandpaper and maintain flat surfaces. But just as often, I hold the paper in my hand and let my fingers tell me where the high spots are. As long as you don't really dig in, you can sand without a block, and you might make faster progress while still keeping things flat. Once everything is sanded, I like to vacuum the piece off, and then I'm ready for primer. I use this bin primer on almost everything I paint. It's shellac-based, compatible with everything, and gives good coverage. It also dries fast. If you take a scrap of wood, 
run a couple screws through it, and then file off the points, you have a good stand to elevate parts while you paint them. And the dull screw tips usually won't mark the finish, even if it's still a little soft. Now, I'm using milk paint for this project, which technically doesn't need a primer, but this stuff is cheap insurance. If you haven't done a lot of painting, primer is usually essential. Most color coats aren't designed to stick to bare wood. They need a base coat. Most paints look better over primer, even if they don't need it. Primer also seals the wood, which is important when you're using cheap pine that wasn't very well dried. There could still be liquid sap in this wood, and it will come leaching right through your paint if you don't have some sort of barrier to seal the wood. For this step, I'm just using a cheap, disposable brush, and you don't have to drive yourself crazy trying to make everything perfect. Even thick primer soaks in a lot, so you just need even coverage and no big blobs left over. Once the primer is dry, we can see where we are. The truth is, it's not good. The side of the case looks good. All the defects are filled, and the primer looks even. But if I rotate the case to the front, it's just not very nice. The surface is far too rough, with open grain and defects that I missed the first time. I could push ahead with the color coat anyway, but I'm guaranteed to be disappointed. If I really want good results, I need to fill and prime again. So I'm going to give the whole thing a light sanding, fill it again, sand the filler, and prime it again. Being critical here can make or break your finish. If you allow the surface prep to be just okay or good enough, you're going to get a mediocre result. At this stage, your secret weapon is your sense of touch. Look at this bit of molding. It looks like a mess after sanding. The combination of bare wood and primer makes it look uneven, but my fingers tell me that it's perfectly smooth and there are no gaps between the pieces. Once I prime this again, I'm going to be all set for an excellent top coat. For this project, I'm using a shellac-based primer, a latex color coat, and for the top coat, I, I honestly don't even know what I'm going to use yet. So how do I know that all of these different products are going to be compatible and look good together? Well, it's no problem. I just need to make a test board. Here's a scrap from the project. I've planed it smooth, and now I'm just going to put on a coat of primer. The trick with the test board is to just stay one step ahead of the actual project. So while you're waiting for your wood filler to dry, test out the primer. While you're priming the real piece, test your color coat. If everything looks good on the test piece, chances are you'll have no trouble with the final product. The last couple times I painted a piece, I used powdered milk paint, which is easy to mix up and easy to apply. You basically can't screw it up. This paint is really good for pieces that don't get touched a lot. It's held up great on the linen chest I made earlier this year, but this cupboard is in a high traffic area. It's in my kitchen. And even though I top coated the paint with shellac, it's still not holding up very well. Time to try a new product. This is General Finish's Milk Paint. It's actually an interior latex paint with some additives to give it a chalky texture. It gets good reviews from other furniture makers, but it's very different than the powdered stuff. It's much thicker, and it really shows brush marks and flaws much more than the powdered stuff. This is all fine, but I need to actually try it. The test board helps, and I know everything is compatible, but now it's time to paint the piece. I start on the back because no one's going to see it, and it gives me an opportunity to practice. My foam brushes aren't up to the task with this thick paint, so I'm using a nylon bristle brush. It wasn't expensive, and a real brush gives you a lot more dexterity for getting into edges and corners. I've never used a paint this thick before, so I've thinned it with a bit of water. The directions say that's okay. It's good to move the piece around a bit as you work. Put it down low for doing the top surfaces, and then lift it up to the bench for doing the legs and the lower edges. Always have plenty of light, especially light shining across the piece, which reveals flaws much better than light coming from straight overhead. Now, I admit, I am not thrilled with the results. I've got a lot of brush marks, and the coverage isn't very even. Thinning the paint might have been a bad move, and that bright white primer really wants to shine through the color coat and highlight all the flaws. The good news is, I can just do a second coat. I'm going to lightly scuff the surface with a maroon Scotch-Brite pad, and then put on the next coat. This time, I'm being especially slow and careful. I know this paint is less forgiving than other products I'm used to. I need to be on the lookout for brush marks, drips, and sags. It also dries pretty quickly, so I'm focusing on long, even strokes. I fill in the edges, and then I go from one side to the other, trying to keep a continuous wet edge with a little overlap between each stroke. I admit, I'm no master of brush technique, 
but I take each project as an opportunity to try new things and refine what I already know. Every time I do this, I get a little better. Now, this is a desk for an eight-year-old, and I made it out of white pine, so I need a really durable finish. The paint I picked should help a lot, but I also need a good top coat. Time for more testing. I need to try at least two different options, so I'm dividing my test board in two. On the bottom, I'm going to try this water-based polyurethane for floors. I don't really like water-based clear finishes, but I tried this on my new basement steps. It went on easy, didn't smell, and it's holding up really well. I'll put on a quick coat and go straight to my second choice. Regular, oil-based polyurethane actually goes pretty well over paint, and I'm just using the wipe on for this quick test. Let's give these both a couple hours to dry, and wow, this is easy. The top is the oil-based, and I totally hate it. It's way too glossy, and the yellow tone changes the color of the paint way too much. The bottom is the water-based floor finish. It's flat, totally clear, and doesn't change the color of the paint at all. It's perfect. If you've ever put clear coat on a project before, this is the same thing. Go for even coverage. Avoid drips and runs. Two light coats is much better than a single heavy coat. I put two coats on mine, let it dry, and then put the lid back on. Well, that was a lot of work. How'd we do? I really like it. The coverage is even and smooth, and the color is, well, it's exactly what my daughter wanted, so I'm happy. I mostly make reproductions of American country furniture, so I'm usually starting with something kind of rustic. I like to keep a little bit of that character, but I also like the final product to be cleaner and a bit more crisp than they would have done back in the day. My work is inspired by country carpentry, but it needs to fit into a modern home. This time, I pulled it off, but it's not all perfect. There's one spot I really don't like. This corner didn't match up well during the assembly, and I trimmed it afterwards, but not enough. I tried to use wood filler to even things out, but that didn't help much. This part just doesn't look good. When the desk is on the floor and the lid is down, no one will notice. But I know it's there, and I need to do better on my next project. And listen, here's the thing. You need to notice your own mistakes so that you can improve. But don't point your mistakes out to other people. If you give someone a piece of your furniture and they're saying, wow, this is wonderful, don't be the kind of craftsperson who says, yeah, yeah, but I messed up over here and over here, so it, it could have been better. Don't do that. All you're doing is ruining other people's enjoyment of your excellent work. Of course, I just told you not to do that, but I'm doing it. Why is that? Well, my job, isn't to be a great woodworker. My job is to help you become a great woodworker. So as much as possible, I try to show you my mistakes, so maybe you won't make them. And if you'd like to see me make more woodworking mistakes, you can sign up to be a patron at patreon.com slash rexkruger, where we have a mountain of rewards and a vibrant woodworking community for the people who make this content possible. If you would like to build this rustic schoolhouse desk, I have a fantastic set of plans that will walk you through every single part of the process. This desk is also included in our Softwood Furniture Bundle, a really high value bundle with five different plans you can make from inexpensive pine from the big box store, two by fours, construction lumber, stuff like that. These are all sorts of pieces at different skill levels, and they're all great ways to learn and improve in the craft. You can get the desk or the whole bundle at rexkruger.com slash store or click the links down in the description. I'll be back next week with another woodworking video and I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. Thanks.